for today we have a guest who was already here in the very first episode so see he's the first one to appear twice here on uh, more than memory and you see it already in my background this is ronald johnson um ronald johnson is the host of the craft of memory podcast we will talk also a bit about that and uh, he's a blogger he lives in orlando florida and i'm very happy to have him here today and uh, yeah for the second time already so hi and welcome ronald um do you want to mute it yes uh thank you for having me it's it's a pleasure i i appreciate your channel and all of the hard work that goes into it um so it doesn't go unnoticed and it's a pleasure to be here thank you i think we got in touch also the first time via the channel you have been in the chat and i always reading there's ronald johnson and uh and now um yeah we talked already but uh, this i think was our first meetup somehow so yeah here on yeah. the channel and uh first thing what i wanted to ask you when was the last time you have been to italy um i would say it was before the pandemic so maybe three years ago okay because yeah. um yeah a bit of off topic for the beginning here but i was checking and searching in your past and i saw that you did a lot of um stuff about language learning italian language learning you have a youtube channel um of that and you are you invested a lot also in time into exploring the culture of italy and uh, also i saw you i think your first youtube video on this uh, on the on the italian channel and how i call it was like yeah. i would like to learn the grammar please comment uh, in the comments yeah, below yeah. how did that go and why did you do that in the beginning so yeah yes so um i read the divine comedy in english by one of the greatest poets dante and i wanted to read it in its original language so that's when i started to study italian and then i learned more about italian culture and i just became fascinated with the language and the country so i, I started a blog it's called italyexplore.com and a youtube channel and then also i i discovered uh andrea muzzi um through studying italian uh so yeah primarily through poetry i got into italian and um is this project still running because i saw you're not that active maybe anymore especially not um, on your social media yeah in, in regards in regards to uh, italian i haven't been uh actively uh publishing videos or writing articles so i, I primarily uh focus on on memory at the moment cool because yeah. when i was um yeah doing some research i was like okay oh, hey, this guy started with memory so it, it it looked a bit like you were there was no ronald johnson and suddenly there was memory ronald johnson and uh, then i i was happy to find out there was something else about you and what i also like to see is that you also studied the italian sign language is this true yeah i i studied italian sign language for a little bit actually i i wanted to learn uh a lot of the dialects of or the italian dialects because there's different regions and every region has a, a dialect so i was I'm, i'm very interested in in that type of stuff so yeah i i wouldn't say that i i'm fluent in it but i i dabbled in it a little bit yeah, yeah. and um as far as i know in in the us it's um not that common that you speak a second language is this true um so as as far what i heard from friends over there and what i so experienced that people are quite happy with english and then it's fine so how come that you are into italian here besides yeah. the divine comedy yeah yeah so it's not it's not very common for americans to speak a second language uh we have a lot of spanish speakers because we have a lot of people from puerto rico cuba colombia especially in the southern states but yes it's not it's not very common um for me it's it's more i discovered something beautiful and i wanted to to seek it out um so i would say that's how i i personally got into the language was just this this passion to see and to enjoy uh beautiful things and how would you describe the 
transformation or getting into memory from that one. So how is the connection there? How did that happen? Yeah, so I got into memory by um, uh, Moonwalking with Einstein mm -hmm. by Joshua Four. A lot of memory athletes uh, tend to quote this book and how they got into memory, but that was also for me. I I read the book and I was fascinated. I was captured by the book. Um, I think I read it in in one day or less than one day. But there's something that the the book did. It was it was sort of like a like a drama. Um, it's it's like when he talked about Mr. S. Um, it's like you can sort of be a Mr. S. So when you look at uh, Superman or Spider-Man and you watch them do their thing, you're like, oh man, I want to be able to climb walls, to be able to fly or to be able to shoot out web out of my wrist like this. But you you know that it's it's not uh, you know possible. You can try to jump off a building all you want, but you're not going to fly. But then I, I, I read the story of Joshua 4 and how he was able to to develop these these skills that is almost in a way magical and it, it just captured my imagination so yeah that's how I, I got into it um yeah maybe from that perspective we are lucky that these memory techniques are not so um well known in the world because that is the reason why are so magical to us right otherwise if everyone would know it then we wouldn't be Mr. S in this situ situation, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, and now you are not just doing like something like memorizing. Let's let's say there are a lot of people doing are memory athletes. They are memorizing for memory sports. But you decided to go deeper into that. You developed and started your own podcast, The Craft of Memory. And what I always really like, I, I heard a couple of episodes now, uh, what I love is your, your calm voice, which introduces the people to the memory techniques. It's really, you, your voice, your, how you say it, how you, how you talk about it is, is really giving the thing this extra mystical, specific thing. You have quite a not calm, deep, nice voice introducing that. So, is it, is it that how you feel about these memory techniques? It's really like the love, the, the, uh, um, that you appreciate that it's there. So, yeah, tell, tell us a bit more about your relation, the emotional relation also to that memory techniques. Yeah. So for me, um, memory is, is beautiful. Like, like in the sense, when you look at the Niagara Falls or you look at the Grand Canyon, or you look at the the beautiful hills of Tuscany, or you look at a, a beautiful painting by Leonardo, or uh, if if you look at or if you listen to a beautiful piece of music, you're you're captured. So for me, apart from the utility of of memory, the the human memory in it in and of itself is beautiful and fascinating. And, and sort of that's the thing that I want to explore and also appreciate how, uh, memory is, is, is tied to, to virtue or, um, or, or, or personal transformation. Um, so, so I would say those are, those are some of the emotional elements that, that attracts me to memory as well. And yeah, very, very nicely described and i mean you started your um your podcast i think um also for to discover to together with your guests the craft of memory uh, you called it like that and yeah 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 and yeah go ahead yeah so um i got into memory sports uh i you know i watch your your channel memory sports tv and uh i was looking for interviews online but I really couldn't find many. Of of course, I could find a couple, like uh, Katie Kermode, uh, you. Um, but I, I really couldn't find like a lot of of interviews because when you're when you're passionate about something, 
you want to know more about the athletes that you watch. So just imagine a world in which you had the NBA and you had LeBron James and Steph Curry and uh, Allen Iverson and Michael Jordan, but you never had an interview on them or about them. You didn't know anything about them. So um, I felt like it's the thing that I have to do as a service to the community. So I was somewhat hesitant in in starting the pot the podcast because um, sometimes I feel like socially awkward. Like, can I communicate well? Um, can I can I do this? I had some some doubts, but I f- I really felt a need and I felt it um, as a service, and also because I wanted to get deep into the techniques and especially from the perspective of a memory athlete. So when I when I surveyed the terrain of, of memory on podcasts, um, it was it was more like the the general, like uh, more beginner concepts, like uh, how to learn names and faces. But some of the questions that I had about memory weren't really covered in depth. Of course, there were a couple of, of podcasts uh that that do that like uh the magnetic mem- magnetic memory podcast and and a, and a few others um but i wanted to deal with specific questions that like so i wanted to cover from beginner immediate to advanced topics in in the field of of mnemonics so that's that was also one of the uh the visions of of my podcast as well so you said you felt the need that has to be there you have to do it um, how and when did you decide to, now I, I start, I just do the first episode. Was there a specific, um, a, a decision like, okay, I have to do, I have to start it now. I thinking about that for a while. How, how does, does that come in the first place? Yeah. Uh, when it, when it first started, I was like, I have, I have to get, I have to get, uh, all of my, my, my favorite memory athletes. Um, uh, so I just reached out to them and said, "Hey, could you, uh, you know, uh, be? Would you be willing to be interviewed on my podcast?" Um, I really didn't know how to start a podcast, so I, I was just uh, researching online. How do you start a podcast? What equipment uh, you should buy? Um, how to do intros? How to edit? So it's it started like that, and I learned as as I went, and I and I think it improved over. Over the episodes, I'm learning how to to ask questions and and learning how to navigate. Um, so yeah, I would say that's that's how it how it started. Mm-hmm. And uh, one last personal question before we go a bit more uh, before we go more in the technical stuff. So you said that in the beginning you felt like oh um, I might be awkward asking these questions and uh, it might not work out. So how did this change when you from the, from the first episode, like up to now, I think you have 13 or 14 episodes right now. So how did this change? Yeah, so um, I would say now I'm a, a little more confident um, in asking questions. I I have more experience. So I would say at first I was a little nervous, but as I continued, I, I became more more confident. I learned how to to ask questions and sort of navigate the conversation so it's it's a learning experience so i would say that i have more more confidence now cool and uh, just one feedback here from katie in the chat she writes i was honored to be on your podcast ron on don't have doubts you are a natural yeah she she was yeah she was the the first uh guest on the podcast so thank you thank you katie uh you're an inspiration and yeah, I was actually listening to that for, uh, that first uh, first episode also today, and I felt also the same. It was like it, it it felt like you have done that before, so it was not like okay, who's that guy? So really nice, and I um, can just recommend your podcast. So I will also update upload something from here, parts of that on YouTube, and I will put the link in the description so you can all check it out.